If you look around you, you will see people's lives and thoughts on autopilot. Now you tell me why someone else is dictating your life and thoughts. Why? Why are your thoughts being manipulated by external variables? What does it take to change those thoughts and therefore change your habits and life? Let's start with the concept of speed. 1697, Newton's Laws of Motion. Newton's first law of motion, an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an external force. This law teaches us to exterminate all negative external forces, so we remain in constant motion. This knowledge is taught in high schools, colleges, it's all around you. You can give me any task, I will demolish it. I don't care if I've ever done it, I don't care if I've ever heard of it. I don't even care if it's never been done. Life isn't easy like that. You have to hustle. You have to push yourself, pain yourself. See, I can do anything because I've grasped the law of motion. Will you plummet down or soar up? Your perception decides. Eliminate unnecessary external forces. Waste no time and ascend perpetually so that your speed will never lose its motion. Now I need you to be patient because I need you to give your gift, listen to me, I need you to give your gift time to mature, alright? I need you to fully develop. The law of attraction states that what you seek is seeking you, and that your frequencies and vibrations are energies which have a boomerang effect. Your attitude determines your direction. The speed acquired will determine if you get there. The attitude acquired will determine how you get there. I, I'm talking about letting your character catch up with your talent, okay? Because just because you got talent, I mean, you could ask some of the most talented people in the world. They got there. Their talent took them places that their character couldn't keep them. And they wish they could have started all over again and been patient and not just waited for the fame or the success, but for the maturity, are you hearing me? For the character to fully develop Stop rushing things that aren't meant to be rushed. If you must rush things, then rush becoming patient. Be so patient that you're in a hurry. Enjoy the process of life. Fall in love with the process. Impatience is an ugly trait. Nobody likes impatient people. A lack of patience affects those around you. It's like a gigantic domino effect of failure. And the worst part about it is, you won't see the chaos until it's too late. Let's say you're at a halt in a vehicle at a red light. The light beams green and the vehicle beside you instantly slams on the gas, maxing out the vehicle speed in seconds. That same vehicle that was once beside you is now distant, heading towards an intersection. As you near the intersection, you witness a car crash. Their life? Over. The other driver's life? Over. In your life, aware, patient, obedient, and alert. Alive. Do society a deed before you make decisions. Pick up a book and read and understand that every success has a seed. Only because behind that success is a patient individual who did his work and is able to lead. But I'm not a born leader. What a poor excuse. And those things called excuses get you 0% closer to your goal. The greatest leaders lead from the back. A humility that is so powerful, it makes the impossible possible. Their light is so dim, it's luminescent. Their footsteps are so quiet, they're thunderous. And their presence is so unknown, it's illustrious. As a leader, you must make your own decisions. You must fill your days with positive habits and repeatedly complete them, day in and day out. Take your mind and your heart, combine them. Dig out your passion and build greater people of that passion. Don't preach what you can't do. Whatever you do, do not be a hypocrite. Being a leader consists of work. You must lead by example. You cannot lead until you can serve. You cannot serve until you can work. You cannot work until you see potential. You cannot see your potential without IntelliKey. The realization of potential. Believing in yourself. Believing in your vision from within. Stepping forth. Unleashing your full potential and bringing your vision into fruition. 
There's some of you, you're trying to get there too fast. Relax. It's going to come. And you got to learn to shut the noise. I mean to shut out other people's opinions. You have a purpose. One which nobody else can do as great as you can. You got to hear it. You can't make a difference until you make a decision. So, for real, some of you, man, you keep crying. You complain about your job. You complain about where you are financially. You complain about your relationship. You complain about your opportunities. You complaining, complaining, complaining. Shut up! Stop complaining and do me a favor. If you want to make a difference, all you got to do is one thing. This is how you get started. All you got to do is make a decision. That's it. And for those of you who've been making the wrong decision, all you got to do is make the right decision. But if you want to make a difference, make a decision. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? A wise man once told me, speed propels the vitality of life. Attitude controls it. Momentum maintains it. Patience protects it. Leadership guides it. And IntelliKey unleashes it. Your brain is like a circuit switch. Once you believe you are something, you actually embody it. You embody that feeling. If you were, God forbid, in a coma, and you woke up, and you didn't really have a memory, and you were told that you used to be a Navy SEAL, and they want you back now when you're healthy, do you think you'd act differently and hold yourself differently, conduct yourself different, and have a different self-concept of who you are than if you were told you were a piano instructor? Being successful in life is all about having the proper belief system in who you are. Truly believing that you are something unique, that you are something special in that field. If you truly believe inside of you that you are one of the best actors in the world, you will be entirely different than if you're like, I hope I'm good. Your expressions will be totally different, your tone of voice. You'll talk in a more convincing fashion. You'll use your natural voice instead of a scripted one. You'll be more emphatic. You'll be more real, more relatable. Our brain is like a circuit. And so if we introduce it with the proper wiring, you're going to go straight to your target. If you're unsure about who you are, then your dreams, your goals, they will never become a reality. Everyone has mental doubts in life, internal conflicts. Even the most successful people that you look up to. But they don't live there. It's how you handle those negative thoughts in that exact moment. And overwhelm them with positive action. And that comes with this utmost confidence in yourself that you can handle the situation. Trust in yourself that you are better than the moment. The great think differently. The, the greats see differently, right? The, the greats have a different worldview. The greats, they, they approach the game in a totally different way. So I need you to do me a huge favor. I need you to think about what you're thinking about when your effort is low. Because if you can get this, if you can get this, you can get any success you want in life. You can have anything you want in life if you can get this. The next time you give a low effort, right? You give it 70% or 50% or 30%. I want you to think about what you're thinking about when your effort is low. If, if, if your effort is low, you're probably not thinking about the opportunity. You're probably thinking about the obligation. And when you think about E.T., how you stay pumped up? E.T., how you stay on fire? E.T., how you always driven? Even in the midst of trials and tribulations, even in the midst of your haters, when people try to break you and tear you down. E.T., how you stay strong? I keep thinking about the opportunity. Every single day, I'm thinking about the opportunity, and I'm not looking at this thing as an obligation. I'm not looking at this thing as something that I have to do, or that I'm forced to do, right? Something that somebody's making me do. Every time I wake up, I'm thinking, I'm alive, baby, this is the day. This is an opportunity. 
If you want what you've never had before, if you want to do what you've never done before, if you want to be what you've never been before, change your mentality. And I want you to see that effort goes up when you look, when you look at it as, I got an opportunity of a lifetime. But you should be excited about the fact that you have an opportunity. for better how many times have i told you you have to be what you have to be what twice what twice as good twice as good as them to get half of what they have give me a uniform Give me a number on my back. I'll give you the guts. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. Not even me. All right. You got a dream. You got to protect it. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you you can't do it. You want something? Go get it. Period. Nobody can speak the way you speak. Nobody can write the way you write. No, nobody can love the way you love. Nobody can do play that piano. Nobody can play that saxophone. Nobody can play that violin. No, nobody, nobody can do poetry quite like you can do it. Nobody can produce the way you produce. Nobody can write scores the way you write scores. Are you hear what I'm saying? You're powerful. When you know within yourself that there's something you want to do, and I believe that all of us were born with a purpose, that all of us have something that we are supposed to do. That all of us have some goodness within us and that goodness gives us a responsibility to manifest our greatness. And when you know that, you can feel it in your guts and you know that you're deliberately operating below your potential, you've gotten comfortable, you stop expanding, you stop stretching, you stop challenging yourself. Let me share something else with you. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary. It's necessary that you have it, that you work on it, that you develop yourself, that you go for what is yours in the universe. You decide, I'm not going to settle for this. This is not going to be it for my life. I deserve more than this. See, that will start making you do some stuff. See, a lot of people go to work every day miserable, and all they do is just talk about how miserable they are. But they don't do anything about it. Men have to live with themselves. I have to live with myself too. Right now I'm living a sermon out there. You don't matter now, Jack. You're in this thing. You don't have a right to pull out from the backing of people that believe in you, that respect you, that need you. If you fight, they won't say that Chapman forced you to. They'll say that you're in over your head that you don't belong is. You can get out there and hit. You can get on base and, and score. You can win this game for us. We need you. Everybody needs you. You're medicine, Jack. But what I've come to appreciate when you're working on changing your life, changing some bad habit, getting out of addictive situations or relationships, or working to build a dream or making a difference in our society. 
it's hard. Easy is not an option. It's hard living. Life is hard. That's rough. How people look at you. How they respond to you. Well, you thought it was over. Well, let's just get started. This is the part where you reinvent yourself. It's time to get tested, to test your will, your endurance. It's time to test your heart, to test your living. It's about no days off, no weekends, no holidays, no birthdays. Listen to me, no days off. It's about gaining the competitive edge. You can't afford to make excuses. No excuses when you feel pain and trust me. You feel it. And all you want to do is give up. And all you want to do is give in. When you feel like you've given all you got, you got to take one more step. You got to run one more lap. You got to throw one more punch until you reach the top. So what do you do when you fall down? Get back up. Everybody knows to get back up. But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. You see, I will try 100 times to get up. And if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again and again and again. You know, teenage mom got pregnant at 17, you know, um, and, you know, I just been failing my whole life, man. My old dude didn't come in my life until I was about 30, dropped out of high school, took 12 years to get a four-year degree. Man, I like I mastered failing, you know, so I'm like so many kids, man, in trouble with the law, in trouble in school, in trouble at home, just trouble, trouble, trouble. And uh, somebody came in my life and spoke life into me. It's like, kid. You got game, like you a leader, you got a mouthpiece, like you gonna do great things and you need to get your stuff together. And they challenged me, you know, and uh, I accepted the challenge and I just fell forward. You know, I learned from my mistakes and I turned my mistakes into a book, I turned my mistakes into a message. See, you've got some talents and abilities right now you have that if you don't challenge yourself to use those talents and abilities, you'll never ever discover the full effect that they can have on achieving all the things that you want to achieve. Most people go through life never using the power they have. You have enormous power to begin to create all the things that you want in your life experience that most people go through life never using. Just find one thing and just decide that you're going to work with it until it gives you the blessing that you want and don't let up on it. Just keep right on working it and working it and working it and knowing that whatever you do, you can better your best. That you can get better at it. That whatever you are achieving right now, it's only a tip of the iceberg of what's possible for you. And so many people are dying with dreams. They dying with books inside of them, CDs inside of them, acting skills inside of them, athletes inside of them. Like so much is inside of them that they never get out because they don't want it, you know? And, and I just know something about humans. You've seen mothers like weigh 140 pounds, pick up a car when they babies are trapped under a car. Like she won 40, yeah. how she pick up the ride? But she wanted it. Like she wanted her baby to live and you take her the next day and you try to get her to lift the car. Man, she can't touch that ride. But the day before, that adrenaline, you know, that, that movement, that everything in her was able to do that because of her why. So when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, man, you could have, you could be, or you could do whatever you want to do in life. Give it everything you got. See, put your heart in it. Most people, when they're working on dreams, they don't give it everything they have. And all you can do is enough. Well, see, most people don't do all they can do. Most people go through life holding back. As long as there's momentum, as long as you're getting up every single day and moving towards your particular ideal, your worthy ideal, you are winning. It is success. 
it, it, it's up to you. If you want to stay there, you can stay there and, and you can murmur and complain and whine and, and, and that's real. But if you want to get up from where you are, there are millions of Eric Thomases who've been where you've been, who've experienced what you've experienced. And we just made a decision that, yo, I don't want this no more. Enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. If you want to live extraordinary, you must do extraordinary. But you must demand it, if you wish it, you must demand it of yourself. We all have problems. What I'm trying to tell you is this though, don't be consumed with them. Problems are a part of life, but guess what? They're not life. Inside of every single problem that might be causing you to worry and creating stress for you is a gorgeous opportunity to build an even better business or build an even better life or install a better belief. So the secret to real happiness is progress. Progress equals happiness. And if we can make progress on a regular basis, we feel alive. So if you want to make real progress, then you really got to look at your life in a different way. You got to say, I got to take control of this process and not just hope it's going to work out. You got to keep picking yourself up and reaching for it. You can get through this. You will get through this. You must get through it. You are going to get through this. You need to get outside your comfort zone. It's not about taking risks, it's about getting outside your comfort zone. When did you define yourself? I mean, really, how many years ago did you come up with what you could and couldn't do in your life? How many years ago? So often in our lives, we've adapted to be a certain way so that we don't fail or so that people will like us or respect us, but it's not necessarily who we are. It doesn't matter how you get knocked down in life, because that's going to happen. All that matters is that you got to get up. Can't turn back the clock, right? The only thing you can do is learn from it, and hopefully you'll never make the mistake again. If anybody who's on the uh, downside of advantage and relying purely on courage, it's possible. It's possible. Think of the three biggest discouragers in your life. They're not your biggest discouragers. You are. Where have you been? Why are you here? And where are you going? You look at your life, you look at what you produce. Is it giving you what you want? Are you living on purpose? Are you living your dream? Are you acting on your ideas? Are you doing all you can do? Have you gotten comfortable? Are you procrastinating? Are you invading your own greatness? Are you surrounding yourself with people that can nourish you? Are you challenging yourself? Are you experimenting? Are you learning something different? Is your life an adventure or is it boring? Why are you here? What brought you here? Investing the time, the money. What brought you here? What decisions are you making right now as you look into the future?
do from who you are. That's what the guilt trap is about. All of us have made some mistakes in life. All of us have done some things that if we had them to do over again, we wouldn't do it again. A lot of things that if I had it to do over again, if I knew then what I know now, I would have done it differently. Well, it didn't happen that way. A lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, a lot of us who begin to focus on problems and enable them to overwhelm us, we begin to think that we have no options. We begin to believe that there's no way out. You can always better your best. You can always go beyond anything that you have ever done. And I'm saying that the fact that you're still here, that you're still breathing, you've got some more work, and you owe it to yourself. So when you get up in the morning, that you can look yourself in the face and say, hey, I'm living my life on my terms. But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down, and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. Pretend that everything's okay when it's not, and you go home and lay in your bed when no one's looking at you, when you don't have to impress anybody, and fear comes in. You know the fear that you have as soon as you walk into the doors of your house, maybe there's a broken home. Maybe you have doubt in your life. Maybe you don't know for sure what's going to be happening in the future, and it scares you. Maybe you're, about, you, maybe you're worried about what people think of you, what people say about you. Just that fear paralyzes you. And I just want to ask you today, do you think you have hope? Right now, you're at the worst place in your life that you've ever been. I believe that this is your beginning, but this doesn't have to be your end. That just because you are currently here, this is your present circumstances, that life don't have to end for you right now. What is it that will give you the drive? What is it that will ignite the courage in you to get up and come back again and again and again? Your why? Your why is going to push you when you can't push yourself. When you want to quit and give up, your why is going to give you that edge you need, that advantage you need, that, that lift that you need to get to the next level. Your why? Yes, we're tired. Yes, we're hungry. Yes, the mind is saying give up. Yes, it's saying quit. But we cannot quit because we realize we have not reached the goal yet. This is not what I said I was going to do. This is what I talked about. This is not the goal. This is not what I dreamed about. This is not what it looks like. I will try 100 times to get up, and if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. So I need you to believe. But if I fail, I try again, and again, and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. And it's not the end until you've given up there's still hope. You're going to work through this. You're going to get up. You're going to get dressed. You're going to get out. And you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna do what you've been called to do. You're going to be what you called me. You're going to have and you're going to prove to everybody that tried to break you. Everybody that tried to stop you. Everybody that tried to kill your dream. You're going to prove all of them wrong. I used the pain to push me to greatness. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up. I'm telling you right now, don't give in. Get through it. There is still time. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, as long as you can wake up in the morning, it matters how you're going to finish. And you will find that strength to get back up. If you're still in the game, which means if you're in the game, and there's still time in the game, still time left in the game, you can still win the game. You can't afford not to be you. You can't afford just to go to work so you can get a check. You cannot afford not to see what your greatest is. You can't afford not to put your foot all the way down and see what you can get out of life. You'll get knocked down, but you won't be knocked out. I'm going to empower me and all of these things that are happening to me right now. They're just temporary inconveniences. They're not stronger than I am. You can't afford not to be you. You're going through some hard times? It has not come to stay, it has come to pass. It takes guts to pick yourself up. It takes guts, you gotta dig down deep to gut it up. Keep on going, again and again and again, until you make it happen, because you know 
that it's possible. And many of you right now, life's got you up against the rope. You can't give up. You can't give in. And if it was easy, everybody would do it. And if life's got you backed up, to start fighting back. If life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. It's necessary you take responsibility for it. That you make it happen. That you don't give up. That you keep on keeping on. That you don't decide that I can't make it because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. We have so much energy that can take us so far. It's necessary that you hook up with some other energy that can take you to the next level. Just go out there. It's possible you can get what you want. It's necessary. If you want it, you've got to go into action. You've got to be willing to experiment. You've got to be willing to fail and to succeed. Here's your dream manifested. No, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. Yes, right? And it's worth it. It's necessary that you have a plan of action, that you're resilient, that you stick to, that you have the vision and never give it up. That you become creative and relentless and keep on coming back again and again and again. And that it's you that you've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. And that it's hard. Easy is not an option. And when life knocks you down, jump back up and say, it's not over until I win. I live my life wrong, and I don't want this to happen to you. If you listen and take evasive action, I can help you change your future. The following few moments may very well change your life, and I wish someone had told me this when I was your age. Money is not evil by itself. It's just paper with perceived value to obtain other things we value in other ways. If not money, what is evil, you may ask? Evil is the unquenchable, obsessive, and moral-bending desire for more. Evil is the bottomless, soulless, and obsessive-compulsive pursuit of some pot of gold at the end of some rainbow which doesn't exist. Evil is having a price tag for your heart and soul in exchange for financial success at any cost. Evil is trying to buy happiness again and again until all of those fake, short-lived mirages of emotions are gone. Imagine having it all, only to lose it all. You are now broke. All the money is gone. What do you have? The only solution to your madness and happiness was acquiring more. Now you have no more means to acquire fake happiness. No more means to acquire more. So, who are you now? Where are all the people now who you thought were your friends while the money was flowing in? You might have lost your family, friends, and mostly everyone in the world thinks you're a self-centered, egotistical asshole. Why? because of your endless pursuit for more, clouded your mind and diverted you from your true purpose in life. I'm not saying you can't be financially successful. I'm saying have a greater purpose in life, well beyond the pursuit of financial success. Does this hit an emotional chord in you? Did it depress or sadden you? Your soul is screaming for you to answer your true calling. You can change today if you redefine what success is to you. You can transform your damaged relationships and build new ones. You can forgive yourself and others who've hurt you. You can become a leader by mentoring with others who you aspire to be like. You can rebalance your priorities in life. You can heal your marriage and recreate a stronger love than you ever thought possible. You can become the best parent possible at any age, even 86. But don't wait until then. You'll always be able to make more money. But you cannot make more time. One day, just like me, you will die too. What do you want to be remembered for? What can you do for others? 
to make the world a better place. What is your true purpose on this earth? We are all dying, but only a small select few are truly living. You can step out of the shadows, into the light. You are meant for greatness. You are meant for more than just what you do for a living. You are an eternal being, meant to inspire and help the world. Let's get it right once and for all in this lifetime. Just love more and more, every day in every way, and never give up, regardless of how challenging your destiny in life will be. The world really needs you now more than ever. Together with love, compassion, forgiveness, and faith in humanity, we will defeat evil once and for all. I'm a hospital administrator. Two-year program, seventy-five thousand dollar job. And right before I took the job, my daddy called me on the phone. Let me tell you about my daddy. When I was a little boy, my daddy would always pick me up. When he came home from work, he picked me up. When he saw me in the nursery after church, he picked me up. No matter how long he worked, no matter how tired he was, my daddy would always pick me up. So when I had my kids, I would always pick up my kids. When I got home, sometimes I was tired. They have a bottle in one hand, and they just lifted up the other hand, and they knew what daddy was supposed to do. My job was to pick them up. Let me help you out, Advocare. This is a spiritual interaction. When you pick up a child, it is a spiritual transaction. When you pick up a child, you change their perspective. When you pick up a child, all of a sudden they can see the world the way you see it. I don't care what your children have done. There is nothing they can do for you to stop picking them up. Well, my daughter's a drug addict. I don't care. Pick her up. My son messes up. I don't care. Pick him up. I don't care. You pick them up. That is your job, Mama. That is your job, Daddy. That is your job, Grandma. That is your job, Granddad. Your number one job is to pick them up and change their. Perspective. My saddest day. One day, my daddy looked at me and he says, "Boy, you're too big. I can't pick you up anymore." But when he couldn't pick me up physically, he would pick me up emotionally. He would pick me up spiritually. I had a great dad because he would always pick me up. He would always change my so my daddy called me on the phone, he asked me a question. He said, son, you had a tough year, what's next? I said, dad, I'm gonna be a hospital administrator. He said, not bad, but let me ask you a question, son. Do you believe you're an NBA player? I said, coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He said, do two things, you can play in the NBA. Lose 20 pounds and shoot a three-point shot with range, you can play in the NBA. I think you should be a motivational speaker, son, but if you lose 20 pounds and shoot a three-point shot with range, you can play in the NBA. I lost 20 pounds, and every day I would shoot 500 shots a day, every single day. I got invited to training camp with the Dallas Mavericks, and not only did I make the team, I became the first ever undrafted rookie free agent in the history of the Dallas Mavericks to start opening night. Could you imagine what was going through my mind? I had not started a basketball game since high school. I got to the arena and they dimmed the lights and they put the spotlight right on me. Right through the spotlight, I saw my mom, my dad, and all my brothers and sisters. Then I saw my dad. And I just pumped my fist. And he pumped his fist. And tears 
stream down my face. The world is always changing. The world is always shifting around, it's always changing. And it's not gonna stay the way you want it to stay. <laughs> it's just not. There is a there's a zero percent chance that the universe is gonna stay exactly how you want it to stay. Life is your experience. And uh, life is about finding joy in, in that experience that you're having, in your journey. Basically, when you have a journey, what, what, is, what the journey is going to do is it's going to expose uh, weaknesses in your character. It's going to expose weaknesses and unfocused and soft aspects in your personality. Things that are weak about, things that are, you're being a little bitch, things that you're being a pussy, things that you're being a whiny little fuck, things that you're not evolved enough, things that are just like fucking lame about yourself, that are not up to par, that are not fucking tight, that are not awesome, that are not fucking you know what I'm saying, right? That's what the journey does. And it, it exposes the shit out of it. Whenever you have some journey, you're gonna have to learn, you're gonna have to change. You're gonna have to learn how to change the way that you view yourself. You're gonna have to change your behavior. You're gonna have to change your discipline. You're gonna have to change your focus. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to transform into something you're not. And then, you're gonna have to kill that thing and then transform into some other thing. And then you're gonna have to kill that thing and you're gonna transform into some other fucking thing. You know, even an animal, right? Say some, uh, like, you know, overplay cheesy example would be like, when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, right? When a caterpillar does that, the caterpillar's gone now. It had to transform itself. And probably that wasn't, like, pleasant. So, you know, when you, when you take the journey, you're choosing to, to experience a degree of pain. You're choosing, you're choosing to uh, have that pain, like, like, harden you. When bad shit happens, that's good. That's real good. You need to actually have fucked up experiences in order to learn. You can view it as a chore and uh, as this annoying impediment to you getting out of pain, or you can view it as this fun thing that kind of brings the joy of life, that, you know, that kind of brings the, you know, give, gives you something to, to do and keep evolving. Uh, but on the flip side, when you're always evolving, that's when you're gonna be the most happy. All right, that's when you, you're generally gonna find that's gonna make you a happier, happier person. That's gonna bring you real satisfaction in life. There is no satisfaction in just getting a certain amount of money and getting a certain girl and just chilling for most people. Happiness in life is not by what you get, it's by it becomes mainly from the person who you become. Look at some of the petty shit that people get mad about. Yo, isn't that crazy? The petty, petty stuff that makes people angry. I have a theory, you wanna know why I think people get angry over petty stuff? I think they think they're gonna, I think unconsciously they think they're gonna live forever. If you think that you're gonna live forever, of course you're gonna be mad about something petty. Because you're just like, oh, this thing's annoying me right now, I'm annoyed. But actually, you're not gonna live forever. So even a shitty moment in your life is still a moment in your life. It's up to you to kind of take it how you want. Some of you going to sleep and you don't deserve to be, you don't deserve rest. You lazy, you don't deserve rest. Rest is for people who work. You ain't doing nothing. Every day you chilling. You need to know your why, and my why wakes me up every single morning. You don't get it. Listen to me very closely. You can write everything down if you want to. Be brave enough to write every one of your goals down, but I'm gonna tell you something. Life's gonna hit you in your mouth, and you gotta do me a huge favor. Your why has to be greater than that knocked out. At the end of your feelings is nothing. But at the end of every principle is a promise. Find a man who's diligent at what he does. And he shall stand before kings and not mean men. Every day you say no to your dreams, you might be pushing your dreams back a whole six months. That one single day, that one day you didn't get up, could have pushed your stuff back I don't know how long. The first level to success in life, listen to me, the very first level, the very first level is you seeing it like it's clear to you, like you know exactly what you want. You know exactly when you want it. Listen to me, you know exactly what it tastes like. You know what it looks like. You know what it smells like. Before you really blow up, blow up, and you get success, you literally have it in the palm of your hand without having it. here to make friends. I don't even care if they respect me. I know who I am. Got enough respect for myself. I do not want them to beat me. They're never gonna beat you. They can 
close to that. And I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now because I care about you. I'm telling you right now because I've been there. I've done that. You've been in it for three years and you about to quit. You've been doing it for five years and it don't look like you think. You put all your money in it. You put all your time in it. People are looking at you crazy. Five years you've invested. Oh, you put too much in it to quit now. And the problem with some of y'all is you want somebody else to support your dream. But this is my time. This is my moment. Tomorrow, tomorrow ain't no such thing as tomorrow. What does your dream look like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? If you want it to happen, get your butt up and make it happen. If you want it to happen, rise and grind. Sometimes we get so caught up on, I'm not feeling it today, or I don't like that person, or I don't like this circumstance or this situation. You, you got to get mature and you got to, you know, you got to be at a place when you say you're going to do something, no matter what happens, you do it. Because again, when you start grinding, when you start waking up early, when, 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 you, when you start, you know, uh, 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 keeping your word to yourself, to your boss, like when you get, go into 120, when you all in by any means necessary, you start seeing stuff and you start experiencing stuff and you start having stuff that people who are not doing that, they never get. You don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are, what you subconsciously believe that you deserve. And as you look at where you want to go, you are constantly working deliberately in the process of developing yourself to become that kind of person, that kind of manager, having that kind of consciousness to create what you want to create in your life experience. A lot of people lay back and wait for their ship to come in. No, I think you need to swim out there to that ship and pull it in. Whatever you believe, if you think life is just a waste of time, doesn't matter what you do, or you know, you're big boned, then obviously you're not gonna go for it, you're not gonna try to lose weight, you're not gonna go push for that next level of your career or your finances or, or your relationship or anything else. Beliefs control us. Stop whining, for real, because when you whine, you waste the energy and you only have so much energy you only have so many hours, you only have so many weeks, so many months, so many years to live. And if you wasted whining and complaining, you will never get to your dreams and your goals. But if you just buckle down, bear down and say, look, I'm gonna get through this pain, I'm gonna get through this frustration, because on the other side of pain is a reward, man, you'll have things that people who whine and complain will never have, and you'll experience life in a way that they will never experience it. Most people go to their graves taking their ideas with them, not wanting to make any mistakes, not wanting to fail, not wanting to step on anybody's toes, not wanting to hurt anybody's feelings, wanting to be known as the nice guy or nice lady, not wanting to be perceived as being pushy. And so they go to their graves with all of their music in them because they weren't willing to act. They weren't willing to step into the arena. They weren't willing to take care of business. And you've got to decide within yourself, come what may, let the chips fall where they may, but I'm going into action. I'm going to do something and I'm going to do it now. Maybe the question to ask is, where do I want my life to be today? And where am I really going? What is my destiny? What's going to fill me up? What's going to give me the meaning for my life? That's going to give me joy in my life, not just achievement, but real enjoyment, a sense of meaning and aliveness. As you begin to feel that you deserve it, your passion and goal is so strong.
the fears won't matter. What are the things that you fear that's been keeping you from living your dream? That's been keeping you from doing some things that you would like to do? Just think about those things. And how do we begin to handle that? Abraham Maslow said that the life is about growth. And he said, you can either go back to your comfort zone and there you won't find any growth. Or you must be willing to go forward and face your fears again and again and again because you're never going to have a fear-free existence. I mean, some fear is acceptable and legitimate. There are some things that you, you really should be afraid of. Now, you shouldn't allow it to immobilize you. You acknowledge it, you take it into account, and you carry yourself accordingly. There are times that we should proceed with caution, but it's the difference between being stopped by fear. It's the difference between having a fear and the fear having you. It's not your circumstances or your situation that determines if you're going to be successful or not. I've been telling you it's your mindset. It's the way you see it. So deciding as you look at your life, as you look into the future and say, what fears am I holding on to? What fears that I'm allowing to imprison me that's keeping me from breaking out? that's keeping me from living up to my true potential, that's keeping me from really being happy, that's keeping me from having a sense of adventure and excitement in my life. What's, what's keeping me from controlling my destiny? What fears that I'm giving that permission to? Notice what I said, that we must give our permission to fear to immobilize us. Because whatever discomfort you experience, you got to handle it. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. Got to go up in there and wrestle with it. Will it be easy? No. Will it be challenging? Yes. What do you want me to tell you? That it's gonna be a picnic? No, it's not. It's gonna kick your butt? Yes, it is. I said to myself, I will never go back to this again. I said, I will never be treated like that again. I will never go through what I went through again. Are you going to want to die? Yes, yes, that's a part of it. But that's just what you must go through in order to get where you want to go. And guess what? You are strong enough to do it. You're strong enough. And your life is worth whatever you have to go through. This dream you got, whatever you want to do, Will it be easy to just run out there and do it? No. Will it happen overnight? No. Will it be a struggle? Yes. Will there be times when you can't make ends meet? Yes, that's a part of it. Will there be times you won't know what to do? Yes, that's a part of it. There were days I didn't want to get up. There were days I didn't want to put my clothes on. There were days I didn't want to face the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But this is only the beginning. This is not the end. This is not where I want you to be for the rest of your life. Decide that you're going to begin to live life on a new level, seeking out new horizons, that you're going to find more love and more joy and more ways to give. And so I was blessed because I went through so much pain that that pain actually pushed me. Oh, you better hear what I'm telling you today. I'm telling you that that pain pushed me to prosperity. That pain pushed me to greatness. You can either live your dreams or live your fears. You have got to get to a point where you say, I'm sick and tired of living like this. There's got to be more. That's, see, that's when people go out and, and strike out on their dreams. That's when people get out of relationships where they're dying together rather than growing together. Listen to me very closely. You got to hear what I'm saying. I've been trying to tell you for the last two years that pain is temporary.